Ephesians 9, 1-11. Spiritual leaders are very precious people. Those who know their value, take good care of them. For example, in Exodus chapter 17, from verse 8 to 13, Exodus 17, 8 to 13, when the Amalekites came to attack the children of Israel on their way to the promised land, Moses went up to a hill, took Aaron and Paul with him, and told Joshua to lead the army in the battle below. The Bible tells us that when Moses lifted up his hands, the children of Israel prevailed. When his hands got heavy and came down, then the Amalekites began to prevail. Now Aaron and Paul saw what was happening and they did certain things. First thing they did was to get a seat for Moses to sit on so he can be comforted. Then both of them stood on the other, one on this side, the other on the other side, to lift up his hand till the evening. And the children of Israel won the battle. Like I think I must have pointed out before, why didn't Aaron and Paul say to Moses, all right, you are tired from lifting up your hands. Thank you very much. Your hands are two, our own are four. And then the two of them will lift up their hands and let us see what will happen. Israel will have lost the battle. There are hands and there are hands. The hands of your spiritual leader, not because of himself, but because of the one who called him carry special anointing. When these people saw that Moses was getting tired, they made him comfortable. They gave him something to sit upon while they were standing themselves on both sides. If you make your spiritual leader comfortable, the battles of your life will be won. Mm-hmm. If he's uncomfortable and cannot perform his uh, duties with ease and with joy, you are the one who will pay for it, who will suffer. Consider, for example, Second Samuel chapter 21, Second Samuel chapter 21, from verse 15 to 17. The Bible says, David went to battle. By now he was getting old. And then in the battle against the Philistines, the Bible says he waxed faint, he became tired. Somehow, some people realized that ah, we're in trouble, we better do something. So they rally around David, and the battle was won. And they said to David, Sir, from now on, you won't go to work with us. Don't put out the light of Israel. Mm-hmm. It's a very, very serious statement. You are our leader. You are the one that is shining. If you die prematurely, our light is gone. That's a very significant statement. If you read the book of Revelation, and you hear when where God was talking, I mean, reading from chapters 1, 2, 3, each time he's talking to the church, and he's saying that they are misbehaving. He says in one place that 
the punishment you will give them is that you will come and take their candlestick away. The candlestick represents the pastor of the church. So God is saying, you don't repent, I will take away your leader and throw you into darkness. Spiritual leaders are very, very precious. In 2 Samuel chapter 18 from verse 1 to 3, 2 Samuel chapter 18 from verse 1 to 3, again there was this situation when uh, there was war. And David wanted to go with them. He, he had organized them, divided the army into three parts. You, you take this side, you take that side. You, then he said, I'm, I too am ready now to go. They said, no way, sir, you are not good. He said, why not? They said, ah. <laughs> you are worth 10,000 of us. If they kill half of us, they won't, they won't bother. If, if only they can get you. Remember Jesus Christ said, they will smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. If they can get the leader, then they will be able to deal with the, with the sheep. Take good care of your spiritual leader. It is not that God cannot take care of his own. Many are times when uh, issues like this come Many of us think that the spiritual leader needs us to survive. It's the other way around. Because when you read 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 2 to 6, 1 Kings 17, 2 to 6, when there was tremendous famine in the land, God told his servant to go and stay at Cherith away from everybody. Twice a day, birds brought food to him. Two times a day. Then they said, the Bible says the brook dried up, the brook where he was drinking, because there had been no rain. And God asked him to go to Zarepa, to go to the widow. He got there, told the widow, you know the story, from verse 8 to 16. And told the widow, give me food first. Give me water to drink and then give me my own food first before you begin to think of yourself. Some people have said, but these kind men of God, that they have been terrible people in their generation. They feast on widows. It was not Elijah who needed help. It was the widow. It was the widow who had only one meal left. And, but it was out of the meal that uh, it came multiplied that Elijah was being fed. Oh. Why don't you read 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 4 to 8. 1 Kings 19, 4 to 8. The Bible tells us that when Elijah was tired and uh, he fell asleep from running from uh, Jezebel. An angel woke him up, brought him fresh bread and the water. Twice. Oh, the brook dried up. Who told you if the brook tried, dried up? Angels cannot bring water. Who told you angels cannot bring fresh bread? God can provide for his own. If the widow had said, no, I can't give you my last meal, the widow would have eaten the food with her son and both of them would have died. God can take care of his own. So that's why you find, for example, in 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 34, 2 Kings 4 from verse 8 to 34. 
when the Shulamite woman asked uh, Elisha to come and eat in her house, Elisha said, I told Abraham in it. I got this morning and enough to take care of me. The Bible said the, the woman compelled him to come and eat. At the end of the day, who benefited? The woman got something money could not buy. And when they came to take that boy away, that boy was brought back to life. And we have just one more point. See, when you read the story in Matthew chapter 13, from verse 3 to 9, Matthew 13, 3 to 9, it tells us the story of the sower who went to sow. And the, the, the seed that fell on good soil, the Bible said, some produce. Uh, 30 fold, another 60 fold, and another uh, 100 fold. People have said, which one is 30 fold? So the scriptures you will find that that has to do with household of faith. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Matthew 6, 10 to 10. When you do good to brothers and sisters, in the church, the harvest will be 30 fold. When you do good to your pastor, you move to 60 fold. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. Matthew 10, 41. The Bible says if you give something to a prophet, you will get a prophet's reward. So how do I get a hundredfold? You go all the way to the high priest. For the household of faith, thirtyfold returns. For the pastor, sixtyfold returns. For hundredfold, you go to the one who made the pastor pastor. The choice is ours. Whatever we do, whatever we sow. That's what we will be. Mm -hmm. Take care of your uh, spiritual leaders. The result will be amazing. Mommy mentioned just one occasion when uh, Papa visited us and uh, we did something. At that time, we had no idea. We never thought we would be passed. We would have said, if anybody told us then that we would become pastor, we would have passed straight, straight away. We would have said, God forbid. And each time the pastors came, once a year in those days for their annual chance we did everything we could in our own little just to entertain them. To, we, because the, 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 the church was very poor, so they were very poorly paid. <laughs> And we, there were five cars in the, in the church. Our own, which was the newest, was second hand. So that tells you the condition of the church. And we never knew that we would be on the receiving end. What you do today, you are doing against your future. May God give you the grace to take care of your leaders. Amen. Amen. Catalonia, <laughs> Nobody <laughs> Since 